MLP Luigi said you should do a video on the Kardashev scale. In my video on the Fermi Paradox, I talked about the possibility of other alien life forms out there in the universe. Or more appropriately, the lack of them considering the very high possibility of them existing. And one way that scientists have classified these life forms is by using the Kardashev scale. Not to be confused with the Kardashian scale, which is a ratio of hip to badonkadonk. Not to be confused with the Baba Duke, which is a horrifying movie. Which is not to be confused with the Baba Booey. Or the Baba Ganoush. I'm hungry now. The Kardashev scale was created in 1964 by Russian astronomer Dmitry Kardashev, and it basically rates alien life forms based on the amount of energy they're able to utilize. Why energy usage? Because it's a very important indicator of how technologically advanced a species is. Take humans, for example. For hundreds of thousands of years, the most energy we were able to create was by burning things. As our technology advanced, so did our ability to generate energy, although we've really just made advancements in how we burn things. Which is really embarrassing when you think about it. Kardashev hypothesized that there's really three types of advanced alien species out there. Type 1 is able to harness all the energy on their home planet. Type 2 is able to harness all the energy in their home star. And Type 3 is able to harness all the energy in their entire galaxy. So let's talk about these one at a time and see exactly what they mean. So what does it mean to harness all the energy in your planet? It's a lot more than just sucking every ounce of oil out of the ground and burning it. It also means collecting every single gust of wind, collecting every wave and tide, collecting all the heat from geothermal vents, and collecting every single photon of sunlight that hits the surface of the Earth. Which scientists have calculated to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to the power of 17 watts. That's 10 with 17 zeros behind it. Almost as big as my electric bill. Of course, doing all that would make our planet completely unlivable. So how does a civilization become type 1 without destroying its entire planet? Internuclear fusion. If you ever wonder why people make such a big deal about nuclear fusion, consider the fact that to make that kind of energy required for a type 1 civilization, we would have to fuse 280 kilograms of hydrogen into helium per second. At that rate, you would use 8.9 times 10 to the 9th kilograms of hydrogen per year. That sounds like a lot. But you can pull more of that out of one square kilometer of ocean water. And our oceans hold 1.3 times 10 to the 9th kilometers of water, which means we'd run out of water about 100 trillion years after the sun explodes. Speaking of the sun... While the methods required to get to a type 1 civilization are out of our grasp, they at least seem feasible. To get to a type 2 civilization, you gotta get a little more imaginative. The most widely known theory to collect all the energy from a star is what's called a Dyson Sphere. This idea was proposed by Freeman Dyson in 1960, and it involves building a gigantic sphere all the way around a star that would collect all or most of its energy that comes out of it. Freeman Dyson is still around, by the way, 91 years old and still kicking. Good show, old chap. Such a massive structure would require resources and manpower that you can never find here on Earth, but some scientists speculate that you could create self-replicating robots that could mine the solar system for resources and build it on its own. It's not too far-fetched, really. In fact, a lot of scientists who are searching for extraterrestrial life are looking for signs of Dyson spheres and interruptions in the light patterns from stars. Now, other ideas actually involve throwing a star into a black hole and then creating the energy from the accretion disk that forms through what's called the Penrose process. Of course, if you do that, it could cause a black hole to lose some of its angular momentum and eventually could stop rotating completely, which would make it a Schwarzschild black hole, and I have no idea what any of that means. But if the idea of throwing a star into a black hole sounds Looney Tunes, the method required to create a Type 3 civilization is straight up Crazyville. How in the name of Xenu do you capture all the energy from a galaxy? Well, you could put Dyson spheres around every single star in a galaxy. There's only about 100 billion of them. Or you could tap the energy of a supermassive black hole, which most galaxies have in their centers. Gamma ray bursts are the most powerful explosions in the universe. You could somehow tap that. And there's the idea of a theoretical white hole, which actually spews matter and energy out of a singularity instead of sucking it in. If you could find one of those, you could use that. Pretty much when you start talking about Type 3 civilizations, you're just playing around in science fiction territory, which is what makes it kind of fun. Some scientists have taken it even further and speculated there could be Type 4 civilizations that collect all the energy in the entire universe, or Type 5 civilizations that collect energy from multiple universes. But the thing about a Type 4 civilization like that is that it would be completely undetectable by us because their actions would be indistinguishable from just the workings of nature. Tell me that doesn't give you a nerd boner. And physicist Michio Kaku speculated that a Type 4 civilization would have moved on from traditional sources of energy altogether and would be harnessing more exotic forms of energy like dark energy. Another variation of the Kardashev scale was suggested by physicist John Barrow who said instead of going big we should go small, saying that you could categorize civilizations by the level of matter that they can control. Like a Type 1 civilization would be able to control matter at its own size, Type 2 would be able to control genes, Type 3 would be able to control 
molecules. Type 4 would be able to control individual atoms. Type 5 would be able to control subatomic things like neutrons and protons. Type 6 would get down to quarks and type 7 would be able to harness and manipulate the fundamental elements of space-time itself. Now a lot about what gets talked about when we deal with the Kardashev scale has to do with alien civilizations and that's all well and good but what it really does is it serves as a cool roadmap for where we could possibly go as a species. Carl Sagan suggested that we're about a 0.7 on the Kardashev scale right now, and uh, Michio Kaku said that we could reach type 1 status in about two or three hundred years, and maybe type 2 status in a couple thousand years. So how do you think is the best way for us to get there? Let's talk about it in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome, I'm glad to have you. Hit the subscribe button up above if you think this is some fun content, and if you want to see what else we have going on here, check out the playlist on this side, and it'll give you a good idea of how much fun we're having. I said this side, didn't I? It's actually that side. And if you like it at all, give it a thumbs up. That helps Google show it to more people out there and gets this message out to more people. Big thanks to MLP Luigi for a great comment and for being a great commenter. I love having all these people in my community. You guys go out there and you have a great week. Thanks a lot. Love you guys. Take care. Whoa. Oh, are you filming? Yeah. Sorry. It's alright.